Hello, my name is Scott Davis. Welcome to New World Birth. This is the care and feeding of a New World Age Report for the Gregorian date of September 2nd of 2015 and one John or Serpent in the Mayan Zolkin calendar with Venus turning direct and the Virgo new moon and solar eclipse. September 2nd is one Chichan or serpent. It carries the themes of unity, flexibility, fluidity, movement, creation of time, kundalini, bringer of rain, the sky serpents, blood lightning, passion, the life force that flows through everything, the energy that connects our primal root electricity with our spiritual expression, and the transcendence of duality, samadhi. Uh, serpents are important in many different cultures, from Kundalini of the human uh, of the Hindi uh, Brahmin chakra system to blood lightning of the Mayan tradition to the Greek serpent eating its own tail, representing life, death, and rebirth. Often associated with Gnosticism, it represents eternity. In China, the snake is replaced by the dragon eating his own tail. In Aboriginal Australia, the rainbow serpent is the guardian of life, fertility, water, and other precious resources. And of course, the Mayan god Quetzalcoatl is a feathered or plumed serpent, the god of wind, the giver of breath, but also the creator deity when he descends into the land of the dead to gather up precious bones, which he sprinkled with his own blood to create humans. This 13-day period is an important time to connect with spirit, have faith in your journey, and experience gratitude in the moment, and let love guide your actions. Before I get into the daily energy for one chichan or serpent, on the second, all the planets appear to be moving in forward motion from our perspective here on the Earth, with the exception of Venus and Chiron, Uranus, Neptune and Pluto, which appear to move retrograde or in reverse motion. And remember the themes of retrograde planets are a review of the past, reevaluate, reminisce, and we can see these themes being played out. Venus retrograde reviews not only our social and romantic relationships, but also what we value. So this is a period when people will uh, assess what they're attracted to, uh, including their possessions and wealth. Uh, Venus began its retrograde in Virgo, but then has backed into Leo from our perspective here on Earth. Uh, Venus retrograde uh, is a time when we notice events related to our relationships and or money that shifts our thinking to prepare us for a change that we'll implement after Venus turns direct. Often we reconnect with old uh, lovers and friends and, and repair ailing relationships during Venus retrograde. Chiron retrograde in Pisces is about releasing stuck emotional energy so that we can return to the natural flow of life. Retrograde Chiron has us reviewing our wounds so that we, they can be released by having the courage to open our hearts uh, to any fear that's associated with the past. When Chiron is in Pisces, people are willing to sacrifice their individual pain in hopes of finding bliss in universal consciousness. At worst, this can be manifest as folks justifying their victimhood as some form of martyrdom. Uh, this should be transcendence and surrender without losing ourselves in the experience. And then Uranus retrograde in Aries, uh, it, it, and it's going to be retrograde until December 26. Uh, Uranus is seeking to shake the very foundation uh, 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 through uh, the unexpected rebellion of the individual. Retrograde Uranus and Aries will have people wanting to hurry the process of getting free, to push the river of revolution, whether personal or political. And then Neptune retrograde in Pisces is seeking transcendence through spiritual experiences. This will be a time Time to use spiritual practices to keep us grounded as we expand our intuition and consciousness. Both Neptune and Pisces, the sign that it rules, tend to be dreamy, imaginative, difficult to nail down due to their qualities. <coughs> excuse me, of illusion and illumination, uh, often without any way to know which is which, uh, which uh, represent, uh, is represented by compassion, but also codependence, selflessness, but also loss of self, higher purpose, but also substance abuse. Uh, in their inspiration to transcend the material plane and experience something beyond words and thoughts. And then we've got Pluto retrograde in Capricorn. This is the planet 
of transformation through death and rebirth cycle. Um, and it's retrograde, as always. This is about uh, reviewing the past. Uh, to, and with Pluto, it's to release anything from the past that's a burden to our new path. Pluto and Capricorn is determined in exposing the darkness and destroying the old order so that we can rise up like the phoenix from the ashes and soar again. Capricorn is about large structures, including banks, governments, corporations, and religions. Uh, Pluto is in Capricorn until 2023, where it's destroying and regenerating the structures that, have, uh, that are a foundation of our uh, societies represented by Capricorn. This is a time of a cosmic course correction for the entire planet. Planet. We cannot continue to harm Mother Earth for the economic gain of the few, of a few. And I found that it's really the resistance to Pluto's lessons of letting go of the past that bring tragedy and pain. So let's look at the daily vibrational energy uh, for this Tricena. Uh, on September 2nd, we have a one John or serpent unity experience through being flexible in the mind's old king talent. <coughs> Excuse me. And here in the Northeast is very humid and it's wreaking havoc with my uh, asthma. So um, it's just going to keep pushing through here. So anyway, I will not be covering the daily lunar activity in these reports other than new and full moons. But that information is available on the New World Birth Daily Facebook posts and on the New World Birth uh, Vlogger blog. Uh, the third is two Kimi or transformation duality experience through releasing what no longer serves us. September 4th is three manique or deer taking action through being of service to others in the Mayan Zolkin calendar. The fifth is four Lamat or star or rabbit or Venus stability through being grateful for abundant relationships. September 6th is five Maluk or offering which is empowerment through appreciating all of creation. Uh, and at this point, uh, Venus has really rounded this corner where it would have uh, appeared to be at a stop and starting to come around on the back side of its orbit, um, which uh, is where it appears to be turning direct. Uh, when Venus appears to be stopped at the opening of the month, uh, prior to appearing to move direct or in forward motion from our perspective here on the Earth on the 6th. Uh, Venus retrograde, again, is about reviewing our social and romantic relationships, but also about what we value, uh, you know, what we're attracted to, you know, including possessions and wealth. Uh, when the planet is stopped, again, it's about being, at, it seems to be at the peak of its power. Uh, often we reconnect with old friends, lovers, uh, or repair uh, ailing relationships under Venus retrograde, as I've said before. Um, it's going to take a few days uh, for Venus to build momentum after moving direct on the 6th. But between then and October 10th, uh, we have an opportunity to implement a course correction based on what uh, we learned during Venus's ret retrograde period. Also on the 6th, the Sun is in a trine to Pluto. So from our perspective here on Earth, this is a 120 degree angle, which uh, brings very intense, powerful experiences, which may illuminate our deepest psychology and darkest, normally unseen realms. This is great transformational energy for investigation into the parts of our lives that should be reformed. This trans illuminates our motives and is great for studying our inner workings. People are more likely to express themselves uh, more forcefully, uh, which it may imp uh, can make an impact on someone. Uh, be careful of folks who are using this energy for ruthless or selfish purposes. Uh, the best use of this energy is for your own personal growth and evolution. The seventh is six awk or dog being in the flow through enjoying family and friends in the mind's old king calendar. Uh, September 8th is nine uh, shuin or monkey uh, reflection through creating something new. The ninth is eight ebb or road balance through uh, serving your community. And we have Mars in a trine to Uranus. So 
Again, another 120 degree, very favorable angle from our perspective here on Earth between Mars and Uranus, uh, which uh, brings new activities and encounters, some occurring quite unexpectedly, that are exciting and have the potential for personal growth. Uh, people want to break uh, out of uh, the daily routine with personal in inhibitions reduced, uh, expect folks to engage in activities that they decide, desired but didn't have the courage uh, for before. So risk-taking under this influence will give a greater sense of being alive, but uh, uh, also may have some unexpected, unpleasant consequences if things don't go uh, work out just right. Uh, this can be used to break down barriers in our lives without having to impulsively, uh, to, uh, impulsively destroy uh, everything that we see as a restriction. And then September 10th is nine ban or read or corn patients experience through maintaining the home. And at this point, we've got Mercury in a square to Pluto. So from our perspective here on Earth, this is a 90 degree angle between Mercury and Pluto, which may have, uh, have folks, uh, 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 obsessing about some thought or idea uh, uh, that's important in in, in, in conversations uh, to be so it's going to be important in conversations to be open to other uh, points of view and not be forceful about getting uh, others to agree with our beliefs uh, this may be a time when we experience one thought that dominates the day and leaves little room for anything else this energy can easily provoke arguments uh, over things that would not seem important in a few days. So if you use this energy to explore your own inner world, it can bring light to something that was hidden in the depths of our psyches. It's great for studying subjects uh, which deal with covert or hidden aspects such as uh, psychology, magic, or the occult, as well as meditation or yoga to unveil uh, the other possibilities of human potential. The 11th is 10 E or Jaguar manifestation through enjoying nature in the Mayan Zolkin King calendar. September 12th is 11 men or eagle resolution through seeing from a higher perspective. Uh, the 13th is 12 keep or wisdom understanding through introspection, meditation, and forgiveness. And at this point, we have the uh, Virgo uh, new moon and solar eclipse, which is opposed by Neptune and Chiron, uh, merging with the sun and supported by Pluto. And this uh, represents uh, the energy uh, 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 that uh, 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 of getting organized as summer is finishing up in the northern hemisphere and winter in the south. Uh, this energetic is about health, work, and service. With this lunation opposing uh, uh, Neptune, uh, it, it brings feeling sensitive emotionally but confused regarding the accuracy of what's being felt. In opposition to Chiron, criticism may uh, may seem more wounding, so it may be uh, so we may want to hold off a day or so if we feel the need to correct someone. And with Pluto bringing out intense emotions and stimulating sensitivity, uh, which also favors uh, sexual relationships, you know, you, you might want to just recognize that people are really sensitive uh, to criticism and uh, under this uh, this new moon. Uh, so, uh New moons are times and new beginnings. In Virgo, this is about discernment, organization, and discrimination. It, it, this may be a time to create a new plan or organize your closets or computer or clean your house. Uh, new moons bring an opportunity to set an intention for manifestation on the following full moon. Uh, so, um, uh, you want what you want to do is look at the house of your astrology chart that contains 20 degrees of Virgo uh, to consider what area of your life is being activated by this new moon. For me, that would be my fourth house of the home and inner world. So I'd set an intention related uh, to using this energy 
such as cleaning or doing uh, home repairs or some type of inner work on myself on that day, uh, which would fulfill the Virgo's new moon's desire for organization and refinement through my fourth house's role of inner world and the home. Uh, uh, September 14th is a 13, a Kaban or Earth movement to the next stage through gratitude for Mother Earth in the Mayan Zolkin calendar. So matter, no matter what the energies are that are uh, affecting you during the one serpent tracena, take some time to be in the flow of the planet by watching a sunrise or a sunset, communing with the stars, being conscious of the moment through introspection, meditation, or being with somebody you truly love. Every day we have is a blessing. No matter what dramas beckon to distract us, we're all just here giving the performance of a lifetime on this world stage just take some time to observe the play as well as act your part remember that you're a spiritual being that's having a human experience I want to thank you for checking out New World Birth the next segment of care and feeding of a new world age will be on September 15th for one et snob or flint with Mercury turning retrograde Saturn uh, returning to Sagittarius the sun entering Libra for the equinox, uh, Pluto turning direct, and the Aries full moon and lunar eclipse. Uh, Going to be a busy report on that one. As always, I encourage you to share this information as videos or as text as widely as you choose. And I invite you to contact me at newworldbirth at yahoo.com if you have any questions or wish to schedule a reading. And I am providing readings and wish to make the service available to the greatest amount of folks. So I've created three options with three levels of compensation. If you've been thinking about getting a reading, please contact me as I would love to provide you a reading during these uncertain times. You'll need to be able to either call me in Maine in the USA or connect with Skype to receive your reading. We're also accepting donations to keep these reports freely available. And again, contacting me at newworldbirth at yahoo.com is the best way to uh, I'll send you distract, uh, instructions on how to make a donation or get a reading. A great way to uh, support us here at New World Birth and you get something of great value. And my readings are, are very detailed. They tend to go on for two hours, sometimes three hours, sometimes four hours. Um, uh, so a lot of information there. As always, I am blessed that you've taken the time to connect with my passion for all these ancient mysteries and their application uh, to our journey during this incarnation. The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste in Lakash. And um, thanks for everything. And uh, look forward to connecting with you either in a reading, a future video, or uh, in an email if you've got a question. Thank you very much.